This video is sponsored by the AV Summit, an online convention for the AV enthusiasts. Happening October 25th to 29th, big changes are coming. Go to theavsummit.com for more info. Today we're taking a look at a 34 inch curved professional monitor from ViewSonic, the VP3481A. Alright, so I'm here in my office and this is the monitor that I'm usually using as of late and it is a 55 inch Vizio OLED TV. So it is a little bit crazy, but I wanted to use it because of the black level. So I wanted to see how some of my videos looked on them. And uh, yeah, it, it looks great. But the problem is looking from this side all the way to that side, it kind of hurts your neck after a while. So right there, I'm looking at one side and then all the way to the other. So I'm like, doing all that so when ViewSonic reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to check out their ultra widescreen monitor yep you bet I was in so I have a few ways I could do this I could either use the desk stand that it comes with so we'll see how that works if it rotates and moves up and down I think it does but I also have a wall mount solution and I actually have one of those desk mounts for a pretty big base mount monitor where you can move it and you know do all kinds of crazy stuff rotate it so we'll have to see how the mount works first and then we'll go from there so one of the first things that surprised me was the size of this box so you're thinking you're gonna get a computer monitor and you get this all right Play port, USB, HDMI, and USB-C. All right, you have your IEC power cable here. Looks like some kind of key type of clip. Instructions. So the VP3481A has a color calibration factory report. And so it tells you that basically it's accurate. You can look at the Delta E, uh, uniformity, gamma curve, all these things that you typically see if you were to do the calibration yourself and it comes calibrated from the factory. So that's kind of cool. Lots of reports, boom, look at this. So you can take a look at that. So basically Delta E less than two, basically it's accurate. So this is important if you're gonna be using this for color correction or photo editing, video editing, if accuracy is extremely important. Here we have a stand and it feels pretty heavy. I would say this is, you know, three pounds or so. It's a nice stand. Look at that. And it rotates. And I don't know what that is. What is that supposed to mean? Uh, popping a pimple. Oh, tear it open. Ah, oh, all right. There she is. Ooh, nice. Can't wait to set this up. You see it says ViewSonic engraved. Here are some of the ports underneath. You see two HDMIs, display port, USB-C, USB, and oh, cool. So it looks like you can have, uh, you can plug in two more USBs and an ethernet port. Wonder what that's for. Here you have a typical VESA mount. And so if you wanna mount this on the wall or using a different type of desk mount, you bottom here, you'll find the buttons and what looks like speakers on both sides here. You can see that curve. So this is to give you an idea of the size of this thing. Next to me, pretty wide. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start setting it up here at my desk. Let me start making some room for that stand. All right, so a few things that I just noticed as far as width, yeah, this 55 is actually not a whole lot wider than this actual screen, except it's, I don't have to look up and down because this is much shorter in height than the actual TV. The other thing I did notice is I was wondering if it did move up and down. It tilts up and down and it goes side to side, but it does not slide up and down. All right, so I was actually wrong again. I should probably read the manual. This does move up and down. I just wasn't pushing hard enough initially, so. Okay, so yeah, you have to put a little bit of pressure to push it down. Up seems to be a little bit easier, but yeah, it does move up and down. 
All right, so this is gonna be sweet. And so, as you can tell, I have a standing desk here. And the problem with the TV situation is I had to be standing all the time. If I were to sit down, the TV doesn't move with the desk, as opposed to this, will move up and down. So if I stand up, it'll still be the same height as if I was sitting down. Time to plug it in. It has this rubber strip that goes behind here that hides all of that away. Okay. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and use HDMI. I'll still need the power cable and the USB to see if this actually powers those USBs. If you're using some devices that require extra power, it might not work unless this is actually adding its own power to help redistribute that to the other devices. All right, so I'm about to turn this on for the first time. And regarding the picture quality, I don't know what to expect, but coming from the OLED, that's gonna be a pretty tough act to follow. But let's try it out. All right, so already coming from the OLED, just initial impressions is kind of what you expect when you look at a calibrated monitor. It looks accurate, but nothing pops out at you as like, oh, that's supposed to be like, wow, the, you know, the wow factor with OLEDs and pretty much any TV where it, it's just really vibrant, deep blacks, all that. That's not what this is. I think that this is really designed for color accuracy. And so what that means is you might not get that extra pop that you would expect from maybe a Samsung TV or some of the other TVs that do a little extra to enhance the picture. This is not gonna do any of that. I'm here and I'm messing around with the timeline on Final Cut Pro and already i can say yeah this is gonna be awesome for video editing it just it looks just wide you have a lot of space and the curve i love the curve on this thing i'm very excited to actually use this another thing i didn't expect to notice was this 100 hertz seems to be smoother than the tv i don't know if it's the motion on the vizio which is not really known for having great uh, motion handling but this just looks very smooth very responsive is what i want to say and maybe it's just something that um yeah i'm not used to that anymore going from the tv and i'm happy i'm happy about that so what i've lost in maybe visual pop i've gained in more usable space and just the fact that this curve just looks i mean this is very handy it gives you more to see in your peripheral vision and you don't have to turn as much. It kind of, it's just, a, I don't know how to explain it. It looks cool. Let me see if there are any other settings here. Oh, okay, so we have sRGB, EBU, C, SMTEC, SMPTEC, Rec 709, DICOM, SIM, Cal 1, Cal 2, Cal 3, and Custom. So this is obviously targeted to a professional who's gonna use this for professional use. This wiggles a lot on my desk, doesn't it? I'm probably not gonna be using the speakers on this. Mm, I've never found any speakers on a monitor to sound better than my studio monitor. So let's not go there. View mode, game, movie, text, designer, Mac. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, a lot of times the Mac has a slightly different color, maybe a little bit cooler. So let me see if this kind of matches what I'm used to seeing on, uh, on my Mac laptop. It brightened it up, but then it turned up this thing called ultra clear and now everything looks way over sharpened. So I'm switching back and forth between sRGB and Rec 709, which is might be something I might want to use for video. I'm not sure yet. With these color accurate monitors, if you're not used to it, it might look a little bit washed out to be honest, but what you end up getting is just more accuracy. So if this was extra vibrant, then I might edit my video and maybe make it less contrasty and less vibrant than it needs to be. So if you were to use it on a color calibrated TV, well, it wouldn't look right. So it's better for it to be accurate and I'll make my adjustments here. If you have a TV or a computer or phone that pumps up the image, well, I mean, that's your phone doing it not what I've done over here. All right, so I am back on sRGB the way it came, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and play around with this a little bit more. I do wanna see if the USB does transfer power to the ports here. So it does look like when I connect the USB from this to the computer, 
the two USBs on here are powered, meaning they're getting extra juice. I'm using an SSD drive that typically won't work unless it's getting some extra power and actually connected to a hub as well. So yeah, looks good. Now it does say HDR10, which is, uh, you know, I'm sure it'll kind of tone map, but this is about 400 nits. So definitely not bright enough for true HDR, but maybe just to give you an idea, it might be okay. So far, I'm liking it. I'm gonna have to test it out for a little while and I'll give you guys a follow up in the comments. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it after I've gotten a chance to play with this for a little while. But so far, the thing I'll notice is that the colors not being vibrant is something that I have to get used to because I know that that's accurate, but still, you know, still maybe I'll want a mode where if I'm just consuming content, I'll want a little bit more pop. And that might be that Rec 709 with the Mac mode that I tried earlier. So I've been playing around with some of the custom settings and I do find the one for web is actually kind of useful because it gives you that look that you're kind of used to if you're not using a calibrated monitor. But some of the other ones are just weird, especially the ones that use that ultra clear. It makes everything look very bad. Um, so something to play around with. I wish they had a remote so I could get through the menus easier. There might be one in the box, I don't know. So I think I will be using it in this web mode most of the time, unless I'm doing something with video and doing some color correction. So I've been using this a little bit more. And one thing I gotta say is that the widescreen aspect ratio is really good if you're gonna split the screen. For years, I've used this app called Better Snap Tool, which allows you to snap stuff to different parts of the screen. And so when you snap to the left, boom, I know, I know Windows already has that, but on the Mac, you kind of have to use something like this. So yeah, this works and I like the way it looks. This is really good for multitasking. I mean, of course, back in the day, how many of you have had a dual monitor, which is cool, you can get more work done, except for the split in the middle is a little bit distracting. So this is kind of like the same thing without that split in the middle. So earlier I wondered whether I need to use my desktop stand or whether I was gonna use the one that was built in here or mounted on the wall. And actually I like the one that it came with, the fact that it is just just not as tall. So before this I had a 32 inch 16 by nine normal aspect ratio 4K monitor. And you would think that, yeah, it's about the same size, but no, actually the fact that it was a normal aspect ratio means that it took a lot more space vertically and just seemed like a much bigger monitor, even though this one diagonally is actually larger than that one. Definitely if you are a content creator or if you're somebody who does a lot of work on a computer, definitely look into something like this. Maybe even just, just try it out. Order one from online where somewhere where you can return it if you don't like it and see what it's like. I mean, this might be the nicest monitor that I've tried so far. Yeah, the image quality is not better than the OLED, but I'm sure that I'm getting more accuracy and just the form factor. It's all about the form factor with this one. And at the price, you're gonna have to decide whether it's worth it for you. 749 around there, depending on when you're watching this video. Yeah, that's about the same price as the other one that I had previous. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to say that it's right up there as far as quality. Yeah, it's really hard to say whether it's gonna be worth it to you. I haven't looked at other monitors to be honest. And so I can't tell you whether this is the best deal in this category. All I know is that I am enjoying it. So I just discovered that the two USBs can actually be used as a KVM switch, meaning that you can actually connect two computers and control them with one keyboard and mouse. They also have this V display manager, which will allow you to access the entire on-screen menu, but do it on the computer so it's much easier to switch back and forth. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be working on my M1 Mac Mini, so a lot of software isn't working on M1 Macs, and I think this is one of them. It just kind of hangs on this screen. Spinning beach ball, ViewSonic, something to work on. Yeah, that's it. Thank you to ViewSonic for sending this out for me to check out. And also, I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to purchase this monitor for yourself. If you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Take care. Bye-bye.